thanks for joining us on another episode of Yeah Uh Uh-huh with Lisa and Phil. (laughs) (laughs) We've had a lot of discussion about that and Phil, the way he says it. Right. And we actually planned that. So let us know what you think. Think of it as like an audio photo bomb (laughs) where you see the lovely Lisa in frame. And then at the very end, I kind of look in from the side and go, and Phil. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what we're going for with that yep. bit of comedic shtick. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, very sticky. Very sticky. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about things that we might be able to talk about. Mm-hmm. And one of the main interests we had since the very beginning of our marriage was a mutual affection for the television program MASH. Yep. So... Something kicked around, it was kicking around in my head. Somebody at work mentioned that the whole idea of um, OK Boomer, mm-hmm. the dismissive um, mm-hmm. commentary by millennials about people of our age that, uh, you know, probably should go eat in the back of the bar or uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, not be, you know, uh, allowed to shop in, in uh, um, Rookwood Commons or something. But uh, that's, probably Oakley. We can use Lorkwood. Right. Yeah. Well, that's passe now. Every because yeah. actual old people are using OK Boomer, so it's not yeah. cool anymore. Yeah. So the new one is, and and just so you're aware, neither of us are Boomer. We are both Gen X, right? So right <laughs> on you, yeah. So we're not shaking our fists too much yet. No, Mm-mm. at the sky. But yeah, I, I did. I did one time catch a certain person whose name shall not be mentioned standing in front of the house. Saying, hey, get off my lawn, but I'm not going to tell you who that was. Wink, wink. In black socks, shorts, and a t-shirt, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Hank Hill. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so I wanted to, I thought when we talk about these television shows, a good theme would be go watch TV. Yeah. Because that's what millennials are telling us to do when they're tired of our mm-hmm. stodgy old bullshit. Yeah. Go watch TV. <laughs> so so we quite literally have gone watching tv quite a bit in our time mm-hmm. and mash is right at the top you know any top 10 lists of television shows we will have watched in our lifetime both of us i'm quite sure yeah. would have mash very near the top if not the top if not the top i, th- I think for me it's more likely to be at the top because it's something i can watch it over and over. I mean, not like within the same week. I don't want to see the same episode twice in a week. But I can watch MASH over and over. And I do occasionally still catch some nuances, which is surprising because of how many times I have watched probably every single... I think I've watched at least every episode three times minimum. All right. It's probably more than that. And there may be episodes that apparently there's some like lost episodes. But I mean, starting with the very first episode that didn't even have um, uh, uh, Christopher, what's the name? Uh, the Christopher, what's his name? Who played Father Mulcahy for most of the series? Yeah, the pilot had Chris, a different, Chris. a different Father Mulcahy. Right. Okay. And he may have been the father from the father Mulcahy from the movie, mm, which was not possible. nearly as good as the series. In uh, well, instance. I didn't enjoy the movie yeah. at all. But you know, there's there are certain actors that I just don't have a, uh, a fondness for, and the movie felt more. I don't know. I mean, it was a little bit more realistic, I guess. Um, I've, I haven't actually ever watched the movie all the way through, so you know. But I do know that quite a few of the um, the actors that ended up in the series were from the movie. But um, I know that they did change Father Mulcahy, which, right. um, yeah, but th- that episode where they, uh, and I don't know if this is the pilot or just the first episode that was aired. I don't get into all those details, but, um, you know, when they, uh, when they take Doc, uh, what is it, uh, when they take the desk and they steal it by helicopter that that's just you know that was so funny yeah I, yeah uh, yeah i remember uh, henry um 
-hmm. looking out yeah. from uh, wasn't his uh, tent his tent was uh, the, the wall of the tent got pulled down the by wall of the office the yeah. main you yeah. know the 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 administrative building where radar slept on the little cot right and then uh, you know Henry had his office and yeah. yeah William Christopher was Dr Mulcahy's name. right yeah uh no father father Mulcahy mm -hmm. right. right I knew there was a Chris or Christopher but yeah exactly Right. But um, but you talked about the pilot episode. I don't remember which one. You know, they all run together. But you can always yeah. tell the uh, the, you know, the first few seasons because mm -hmm. it was all shot outdoors on mm -hmm. a, a set in Hollywood. Yeah. And it was more – it was a little more – I mean, there was seriousness, but – it was a little more, a little um, more slapstick. Yeah, a little, just a little more humor based, as opposed to like after Frank left. Even when BJ came in, it started to be a little more serious with his family issues. Um, and then, you know, as time went by, uh, what is it? They kind of eliminated all of the. Well, they removed all of the cast members that were um philanderers yeah you know right because um i mean frank left frank was having an affair with margaret yeah. now margaret stayed but mm -hmm. she never cheated on her husband right and i have a thing about that because the way i see it um if if you were to cheat on me i wouldn't be mad at the woman because she never promised me a thing mm-hmm Okay. It'd be all I'd on be me. mad at you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Yeah. Good to know. Although, it's all on you. Never really testing Lucky that. You. Uh, well, don't yeah. tend to test that. Yeah. Someday I'm hoping he'll actually leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. So um, let's let's talk mm -hmm. about. You know, I don't think we should go off here and start like uh, listing our top ten episodes or trying to mm. uh, go into. Uh, I just kind of I reviewed some episodes before uh, mm -hmm. we started this podcast, and I know there are moments and things mm -hmm. that, that maybe we don't really associate with the, the season or anything or the right episode or whatever. Yeah. But I was mean, remember the episode? I believe one of the earliest episodes was titled Tuttle. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm And that one. Um, um, yeah. They, um, they needed to do, I think, a charity thing. Uh-huh. And so they created Tuttle. We can all be comforted by the thought that he's not really gone. That there's a little Tuttle left in all of us. In fact, you might say that all of us together made up Tuttle. Um, I do remember that uh, Margaret was very excited because of how they described him. Right. Like his legend really preceded him. Yeah. Pro uh -huh. Yeah. They created this fake Tuttle. They even had to create a um, um, a file for Tuttle. Yeah. And um, I think Tuttle... Was he a doctor? He, yes, he was yeah, a doctor. But he was like a fantastic doctor. Yeah, like but he, he went to the like um, the, the polytechnic something, something like it was almost Russian. Yeah. I, I But uh, it was a European college, right. his medical school. Uh, and then, um, what is it? I think he was a West Pointer. Yeah. I, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I believe he was. Yeah. Um, and of course he was completely fake. Right. Um, yeah. But so many of the people in the camp now, Margaret did not. And Father Mulcahy he did not, but many others in the camp, I think Henry and, um, and so, and somebody else was like, Oh yes, I've met Tuttle. I know Tuttle, you know, Tuttle's a great guy. It's like everybody but was afraid to admit Margaret admitted. No, but everyone was afraid to admit they didn't know him. Yeah. You know, that they hadn't seen him. And it was just kind of an interesting, um, it was an interesting look at basic humanity, if you will. Yeah. You know? Like a human placebo yeah. almost. Yeah. And then I don't think you could get away with that with um, with uh, with Colonel Potter. No, no. no Colonel Potter was he, when he came. Uh, he was much more you know, regular arm. <laughs> Colonel Potter, sir, Corporal Klinger. I'm Section Eight, head to toe. 
I'm wearing a Warner bra. I play with dolls. My last wish is to be buried in my mother's wedding gown. I'm nuts. I should be out. Horse hockey. <laughs> I've seen these Dodgers for 40 years, all the tricks. Knew a private, pretended he was a mayor. Carried a colt in his arms for weeks. Another fellow said he was a daisy. Insisted we water him every morning. No, no, Corporal. It ain't gonna go with me. Now you get out of that frou-frou and into a uniform. And you stay in uniform. <laughs> Dismissed! Wait, I'm finished. I gotta burn my bloomers. <laughs> I see him around sometimes. We're together in that respect, yes. Yeah. So that was a, a good episode, but uh, there was another one early on, you know, like the Henry. I think I've always think of MASH as the Henry years. And then the Potter years. And then years. the Potter years, right? And then I also kind of demarcate it with um, uh, with the arrival of um, Charles. Yeah. The arrival of Charles Winchester is when they really started getting more serious. Right, right. Yeah. That, that's when you had more of your, mm -hmm. you know, very special episode of MASH, you know, yeah. where some, some uh, a kid would come in with a, a wound. Like, I remember there was an episode with Charles. Mm -hmm. um, of course, he was uh, very a man, a refined. The pianist? And, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That uh, had, you know, he wasn't, wasn't going to be able to play the piano anymore. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, but uh, Charles just, uh, you know, they tried to show Charles's humanity, even uh -huh. though he kind of took over for Frank Burns, who was a yeah. complete buffoon and a clown. Yeah. They, he didn't, you know, it was diametrically different than Frank Burns. You know? Oh, yes. He had Very much so. this humanity about him. You know? Right. Even though he also had moments of being completely a complete asshole. You know? Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, when he... Um... Yeah, when he found the, or when he curated, found, oh, no, what it was was Klinger was going into town. Mm -hmm. And he, I don't know if he had a two-bay pass or he was picking up things from Seoul. And he went into town and there was even some problem because Klinger took so much time. He had trouble finding the sheet music that Charles had specifically requested. Yeah. And what it was was, I believe, I mean, my head wants to say it was Chopin that was designed specifically for the left-handed because he had been right-handed. Right. And so Charles brought him sheet music so that he could use just his left hand. Right. And what Charles was saying to the man is, sure, it's going to take practice and you're going to relearn some things, but your musical talent isn't in your hand. It's in your it's in your soul, in right. your heart, in your brain. Yeah. And I just, oh, that was, was a, so sweet. That was a great episode. I mean, it wasn't mm -hmm. a crazy episode. Right. But it like offset the other episode. Remember the episode mm -hmm. when the guy came in and he was from Boston also mm -hmm. and he was a real snob mm -hmm. and they had a snob off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And Charles were like, you know, they would have these big mm -hmm. heated arguments over. The way I was in LOA, standing in the very house where Rubens painted his most wonderful masterpiece. The rape of the daughter of Lucillus. Surely you jest. <laughs> Hardly one of Rubens' best works. Oh, granted, it appeals to bourgeois taste, but besides, the master painted that when he lived in Antwerp. Well, merely an error in geography. My brain is not a map. Barely a brain. Oh, yeah? Well, says you, you, you boorish Sussex fop. Ignorant back bay Philistine. Snob. Clod. Dandy. Cretin. I don't care who your parents are. You can take your father's villa and stuff it. <laughs> Uh, now was he from boston or was he british yeah. there was an episode with someone who was british who who messed with it was either that guy or a guy that was british who messed with charles he may have been british and he was doing it just to mess with him but you know charles was harvard right yeah so maybe uh, this guy was princeton or something yeah you know okay it's I like think i know what you're yeah. saying yeah 
Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So he had his crazy moments, but by and large, I thought uh, Charles, even though typically I didn't like the. I'm sorry, but this is acting weird. Okay. It was pulling. Typically, out I like the, the funnier early episodes best. Yeah. I felt like Charles, you know, brought yeah. a this, lot to the. David Ogden Stiers. Yes. Just and it passed was, away not too long ago. Oh, man, that's so sad. Yeah. Oh, this might be that episode. I don't know. Uh, we have an episode of MASH uh, on in the background, and Charles is talking to a um, uh, a friend of Margaret's. Yeah. As we know, Margaret had a lot of friends. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we should talk about the characters rather than the episodes. Okay. You know, we've talked about mm-hmm. Charles. Yeah. But let's talk about mm-hmm. Klinger. Klinger. <laughs> Klinger is great. Klinger is awesome. Yes. The dresses. Yeah. The um, One of my favorites is an episode when where had Harry Potter came on as a general. And um, he... Um, Klinger, they, they were like, you know, Klinger, you're not allowed to wear a dress. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do that. And of course, Klinger being Klinger, he decides to... Um, uh, uh, to to show up anyway in a dress, right. and um, as Potter goes past Klinger in this dress, he says, "I think it. I don't remember if his the the name was Margaret or Miriam, but he said, and I'm going to go with Miriam. I might be wrong, but it was some kind of an M name in my memory. Yeah, and he says, uh, "Not now, not oh, not now, Margaret. I'm re- reviewing the troops." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And that may have been, but he came on a couple of times. Yeah. He was on twice before he came on as Potter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was one where uh, Radar sitting there, son, uh, he's got his shirt off and he's uh-huh. got his uh, like oh, a piece of was, metal. No, no, that was when Potter showed up. That was Potter's first meeting well, with that's Radar. Well, that's what I thought you just said. When Potter, mm-hmm. First time no, Potter no. showed up. There were two episodes where Harry the the actor who played Harry Potter Harry Morgan or I mean Harry Morgan yeah Harry Morgan yeah. appeared in two episodes as not just Potter's Colonel first name Potter. is Colonel yeah. right no it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> um Colonel I can't remember his first name right now and that's my memory it's just kind of temporary but that's um crazy. yeah Sherman uh, Sherman Sherman, Sherman T. T. Potter. Yeah. Sherman T. Potter. Yeah. Because Radar, uh, oh, oh. Klinger. They came in and Klinger was practicing his. He was going to forge a signature to get right, his own papers right. to get out of the you know, service. Yeah. But my favorite with Klinger mm-hmm. is always the one where he's eating a Jeep. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's great. That's yeah. Because he, he had like uh-huh. chopsticks and he had the little bolts and the uh-huh. oil and shit. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He made, he made it look like a delicacy. Sitting in the middle of the compound? Yeah. No, that was the one where he he, he poured gasoline on himself. He was going to emoliate himself. Yes. Emolate uh-huh. himself. Yeah. Emolate. And, uh... Oh, what the devil's he up to now? I wouldn't stick around unless I had a strong stomach. Oh, my, he's going to emolate himself. Oh! Uh, hold on, son. Don't do that. Too late, Colonel. I'm finally going to get my discharge. I'm going home in a butt can. Just think about what you're doing, boy. Here, toss me those matches. So long, boy. Goodbye, KP. Adios, Korea. Sprinkle my ashes over Toledo. Hey, put down those matches. We can work this out. What he said. What's the use, Colonel? Well, give me a chance. Come on over to my office. Over to the office. Well, okay. Save my spot. Uh, it, it, my feeling is if he really didn't want to do it, he should have put something else in the can. But, yeah. you know. Well, my brother-in-law, um, Mike, mm-hmm. loved Klinger. Yeah. He just loved it. He watched MASH religiously. And, yeah. And, and Klinger was the reason. It didn't yeah. have Klinger on it. It was a bad episode. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, but he would do anything mm-hmm. to get out of the service. Oh, yeah. And in that respect, he was kind of like, the only sane one, right? Mm-hmm. So, kind of a, and that was their, the probably I believe Claire was their nod to Catch Twenty Two, where if you were actually crazy, you know, I mean, you, so the movie Catch Twenty Two, yeah. yeah, everybody and was the on idea to of Catch Twenty Two, yeah. If you were trying to get out, obviously you weren't that crazy. Well, what about the time when he wore the salami around his neck? 
That was uh, that was kind of <laughs> well. He was eating it. They sent eating. it to him from home. Wasn't he eating raw garlic too? Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. like... No, it was a garlic salami. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, we're getting a little feedback here somehow, and I don't know what it's. Well, from. Let's make it, okay. Let's uh-huh. be, I have the audio turned up pretty loud to make it oh. sound decent finally. Oh, and they okay. have been sounding decent, but we get we get a little. Well, bit I'm of, getting the not 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 thing. That's anytime the equipment is bumped. Uh, okay. So. We'll just pretend I bumped it. Okay. Um, but let's talk about, uh, okay. Well, we're still, I think we're still on Clinger for a couple. Well, minutes. we could talk a while about Clinger. I, I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, you know, I mean, he spent all that time trying to leave and then he ends up staying in Korea the longest. Right. He stays at the end. Yeah. Because of his wife. He marries a, he uh, marries a Korean, Korean girl. girl. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, uh, and he stays. Right. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. That's well. That's that's a good. That's a good uh, story arc. Yes, it is. tried so hard to go home, and then mm-hmm. in the end, he wanted to he stay. Stays. Yeah. For me, though, that last year there was it was so much more serious, and it left me more in thought and even sadness. Yeah, but sometimes it did seem like it was really reaching to try to to be more. I don't know, serious or something. It just it just felt. Honestly, there was a little bit of maybe like almost preachiness. Yeah. Well, if there was it, one episode I did mm-hmm. not really like, uh-huh. there's probably a couple I didn't really like. But right. the one I really hated was when, and I think it was the final episode, the whole thing with the final episode where Hawkeye was losing it. He's right, losing where his he mind. was in the mental hospital. I hated all of that. I hated and, seeing and the, all of that. The, 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 the reason why, the reason why he ended up in the mental hospital. You know, I mean, that just, oh, my God. What happened next? <laughs> There's something wrong with it. It stopped making noise. It just, <laughs> just stopped. She, she killed it. She killed it. She killed the chicken. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I didn't mean for it to kill it. <laughs> I, I just wanted it to be quiet. It was a baby. She she smothered her own baby. You son of a bitch. What? Gosh, that just pierced my heart. Yeah. I mean, that woman acts, I mean, not on purpose, probably, but basically she suffocated her baby. Right. To keep it from crying because the, the you know, the, the, the other the, the yes. communist soldiers were right there. Yeah. And, uh, and, and one of the reasons why she was quieting the child was because Hawkeye kept saying, shh, shh, yeah. shh. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and that just, wow. I didn't like you know? the dream episode either too no, much where they was, had this really yeah. kind of weird, yeah. they all had weird, it was well done. I mean, they seemed like dream right. sequences. But. I, I felt like those episodes belonged more in, um. Um, what was the Vietnam movie? It was an hour drama. It starred, um, oh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, China Beach, China Beach, yes, yeah, maybe so. Yeah, I felt like that kind of episode would have that storyline would have been perfect for China Beach, right? Mm-hmm. But getting back, right. to, okay, so mm-hmm. let's talk about Hawkeye a little bit because okay. he's kind of, I guess, he would be the He's the main character, main the person, central yeah, character. Definitely. Yeah. And and he and uh, and Trapper were the characters from the movie. Right. You know, and then I was kind of wondering whatever happened to Spear Chucker. But I, I don't think two um, Gen X Caucasians should really kind of get into the fact that MASH was pretty monochromatic yeah. after Spear Chucker left. I didn't like the whole, yeah, I thought that was really, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not totally politically correct or anything but i thought mm-hmm. that was a pretty was bold a pretty nickname white, to yeah. to use on that well i mean that's the, when they when they would use that when i hear trapper because i remember trappers uh, saying the name you know as they're walking through the compound or something mm-hmm. and he throws a ball to to in a spear and trucker he catches it. Yeah. yeah and he said something he said his name i was like man that sounds terrible what the mm-hmm. fuck yeah <laughs> it's like what what you can't use you can't say that no. But, oh, yeah. No, they wouldn't be able to. At least two of the characters would have to be ethnic. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, it's just that's the way it would be. 
Well, I'm surprised that that left such an impression on me that I'm surprised it wasn't a point of contention. But yeah. maybe it was. If you look, there may have been articles. There may have been backlash to that. Mm-hmm. But talking about Hawkeye, mm-hmm. you know, his name came from the last of the Mohicans. Right. Because his, his father loved that book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's kind of a complicated character uh-huh. because, um, you know, he, he he's really sexually active. He really has a... a he's a very a, much a Lothario trying to date all the nurses. Right. Um, he never really did parlay over into the um the indigenous the korean yeah um ladies right he uh, although he did have one relationship with um that one uh woman who was a teacher and then she was um looking for i can't remember i think she was looking for her mother maybe yeah um, but somehow he ended up having a relationship with that one person, and that was a real relationship, as opposed to a he 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 fair affair. The, type the one with Blythe Danner when Blythe Danner came back. No, oh, mm-hmm. okay. I'm talking about a Korean lady. All right, she was a, a well, she was played as a Korean lady, but she had been educated in America. Yeah, and she had come back home to take care of her parents, and then the war started, oh. and um, they had um. I think he borrowed some special food from Charles's stash to treat her to a picnic. Yeah. And that was one of the most serious. He had like two or three kind of serious infatuations slash relationships uh, during the course of the series. Yeah, Blythe Danner. That was a recent episode we saw. And then there was one where he fell for this one lady and he found out she had a wedding ring. And that's where we found out that he tended, even though um, he chased Lieutenant Dish for quite some time, right. Lieutenant Dish did not, she wasn't married. She was a fiance. She was a fiance, but she was not married. What? Wasn't Lieutenant Dish uh welcome back cotter's wife um no not initially what it was was i think there was there was more than one actress who played lieutenant dish because at least that's my understanding the one that i'm referring to specifically is um he would like do stuff like he would be in her her footlocker um, they did like a montage of all yeah, these things where she reached into was, her closet yeah, to get her negligee was. and he'd hand it to her yeah. and then he'd like mm-hmm. smile at her and then, yeah, <laughs> you know. or, or she'd be like putting on her stockings or something like that yeah. and he'd be like uh, look out from under the bed or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it was funny. Yeah, yeah. and it was, um, I mean, it was stalkery, but it was done in a humorous way. Right, right. And well, she today, was like, yeah, uh, she just rolled her eyes, oh, Hawkeye. Right. And, uh, but... Uh, one of the reasons why he was doing that is he was talking, trying to talk her into being part of the prize for an auction because they were auctioning off a trip to uh, Seoul, yeah. I think it was. It might have been Tokyo, but I'm pretty sure it was Seoul. And they were auctioning off this trip to Seoul with the com- in the company of a lovely nurse. A girl with a face that doesn't quit. A girl with so much body, she should be continued on the next girl. Lieutenant Dish. Lieutenant Dish. Lieutenant Dish will never agree to this. Oh, but she will. Because inaccessible as she is to everybody else in this cruddy outfit, she's putty in the hands of the master. Hawkeye, that makes me crazy. My lips were made by Stradivarius. Dish, I have to ask you a favor. How many times must I tell you? I'm engaged. I'm engaged, too. Think of me as a dress rehearsal. Always sneaking up on me. Who sneaks up on you? You really thrive on rejection. Hawkeye, I'm trying to be faithful. That episode, her name was Lieutenant Dish. And he might have been, I, yeah. Um, and, she, and of course, Father Mulcahy won the trip with the nurse. Of course he did. Yeah. Of course, and uh, and uh, uh, and so at right when they were announcing who won, which they were not supposed to have a party, was that the episode where um, they wrapped Frank in a body cast hmm. so that they could have the party? And Margaret kept going all over the place looking. There's an episode where they wrapped Frank in a body cast, a half cast. Yeah. Okay. 
And um, and Margaret's looking for Frank everywhere and she can't find him. And he's in this cast and he's sedated and he's in the little hospital room. And um, uh, Father Mulcahy and General, the, the primary general from the very beginning, he would show up all the time and, and hello, Margaret. Right, right. Yeah. He, um, they showed up right as they were an, announcing the, um, or not Father Mulcahy, I do apologize, Henry. Henry and General what's his name showed up right as they were announcing and so uh, the general says am i correct did the did your did the company priest just win a vacation with a nurse <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and um uh, what is and but yeah i think that might have been the same episode where they body casted frank well i mean you could probably make some great episodes by you know putting bits and pieces from different episodes mm -hmm. together, which yeah. is what we're in danger of probably doing. But I'm wondering mm -hmm. if that's the one mm -hmm. also where uh, Colonel Potter was gone for. No, that was Henry. Well, I'm, I'm getting to you know, the point oh. that, that remember uh, Frank was cast? left in charge of the compound. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, you know, everybody he blared the bugle at 6 a.m. And he wanted all the mm -hmm. doctors to show up and, and salute and, you know, stand yeah. in line for inspection and, and all this. And be fully dressed yeah. and not in their bathrobes. Yeah, and then he wanted to do like a, a, a drill or something like, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But there were episodes like that throughout. Whenever right. Henry or, or Potter would leave, um, Frank being the major was next in command. Yeah. And so... They would have quite a few episodes like that. And he'd want to like outfit him with guns and go to the front line. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Hawkeye, mm -hmm. you know, in real life, played by Alan Alda, mm -hmm. who was like the complete opposite of him. He was like a woman's rights activist and very liberal, very well, well not that Hawkeye not wasn't liberal, say... but um, yeah. just very um feminist, you know. Mm -hmm. Um I, I'm not willing to say that Hawkeye was the complete opposite of Alan Alda. Yeah. While Alan Alda was unmarried and very much a horn dog and a womanizer, we don't know that Alan or that Alan Alda wasn't that much into women, but he was just married because Hawkeye did have that. Um, at the beginning, I'm not sure if he was so serious about whether or not they were married, but as time went by, he definitely showed that he did not, he did not want the married women. Yeah. That they were off the, off limits. Well, he would, he tried, he got upset mm -hmm. with BJ because BJ cheated on his wife. Mm. BJ wasn't having an actual affair. He was having an emotional affair and he was tempted to cheat on his wife, but he didn't actually do it. Yeah, but Hawkeye yeah. got upset. Though. Yes, Hawkeye got yeah. very upset right. because um, that wasn't part of BJ's like personality. Probably because being in war mm -hmm. and being insecure, mm -hmm. he found a certain amount of security in people and knowing someone or knowing what someone would do. You know, knowing. Yeah. You know, uh, this you was mean a, Hawkeye? Uh, the predictability, the expecting a certain level. Like of, BJ, he's closest. He's a bunkmate. You know, he's closest guy mm -hmm. his closest yeah. person mm -hmm. and it probably would give you a feeling of uh, a vulnerability or, 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 or insecurity mm -hmm. if a person didn't react or act the way you would expect them to you know yeah maybe i'm, I'm not gonna turn that down yeah. but, but as you said also hawkeye like alan alda was very um uh liberal <laughs> And I will say this, too. I never got a feeling from Hawkeye that he thought less of the women that he was chasing. Yeah, I agree you know? with that. That he didn't think of them as, you know, sluts or or, pros or whores because they were, you know. Because they slept with him. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then, too, with Margaret and Frank, um, they were. They really gave Margaret and Frank the business about their, you know, situation and relationship. But it was never shaming Margaret for, you know, well, let's face it, at, at least towards the beginning, Margaret was kind of what you would consider to be a slut. Yeah. But I don't think that MASH as a whole, and Alan Alda in particular, ever slut shamed, yeah. which I, I liked that. Because, well, Margaret's character yeah. also evolved. Yes, she did. 
because I read not all the characters evolved very well. I read something about Loretta Swift uh-huh. and her character. Yeah. That um, you know, at the beginning, she was kind of carrying on this uh, affair with Frank. Not kind of. And, but, well, yeah, and she yeah. would get jealous if he would mention his, his wife. You know? I don't blame her. And um, so kind of uh, uh, a superficial person that mm-hmm. got caught up. She loved yeah. men and with, uh, you know, generals with, ba- you know, with well, decorated she liked the gen- power and, and right. she liked uh, uh, military right. gravitas, if you will. But her character changed immensely yes, it by did. the time he ended the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was a, a women's, um, she was kind of a. Uh, she became someone who wanted to advance. Empowering. Yeah. And, yes, empower. Yes. Yeah. Because, and, and she was also very jealous about like the nurses and, and the fact that she was kind of alone, if you will. Right. You know, I mean, and let's face it. I mean, I think her parents were, I think her mother was still alive. No, her father was still alive, but there was no real contact there from what i could tell and i might be wrong they both her parents might have been gone for all i know but um that i i just don't remember them ever specifically mentioning it and like for instance in the early episodes there were a couple times where hawkeye mentioned a sibling i think it was a sister and um when you got to a certain point he became an only child so it was just him and his dad after his mother passed away oh good catch yeah and then, like, for well, instance, Hojon. Yeah. Well, um, let's take a break okay. for our sponsor. All right. So we're back, and I, don't, I wanted to talk about a couple more of the uh, the, the most important characters on the show. You know, it'd be impossible to cover them all. But some of yes. the, let's talk about a little bit about Frank Burns, <laughs> who was just absolutely, Larry Linville was absolutely he a comedic genius. He played him genius. so perfectly nutty. Right. I mean... I, I think of him as almost like him or Don Knotts as yeah. one of the best, you know, uh, mm-hmm. goofball characters in TV history. Oh, yeah. It's just great. Oh, Margaret, you don't know what it does to me being near you all day in surgery, only able to touch you through rubber gloves. Hi. Uh, we were just um, going over tomorrow's duty roster. The one on my desk? He means yesterday's duty roster tomorrow. <laughs> Never mind. I've got something serious to discuss. Well, where is it? A, a Captain Hildebrand showed up today from headquarters in Seoul. He's a psychiatrist, and he's here on Clayton's orders. Now, it is my guess that someone in this unit has been rat-thinking to the general on the sly. It wasn't me. Anyways, my duty to. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with reporting the unmilitary posture of your command, Colonel. Just let me remind you, Mrs. MacArthur, that if this unit gets split up, it might just happen that we all get split up, which means that you and Dr. Burns here will have to stop practicing medicine together. And whatever else it is you've been practicing. <laughs> what are you doing? That was a... Can't a guy have a wash and set without somebody biting him on the neck? Biting who? I was biting you. No, you weren't. You were biting me. Clinger, what are you doing in here? Just bowing a little of your shampoo, Major. It's wartime. We all gotta help each other. No, we don't. You get out of here, you pervert. Pervert? Who been who, Major? Out! Out! I've had enough of your shenanigans. I'm going to talk to Henry. I want that freak out of this outfit and out of the U.S. Army! Oh, Frank, you're so exciting when you get all riled up and decisive. I oh, am? Yeah? Frank, would you like to bite the real thing? I demand this wedding be stopped immediately. Oh, shut up, Major. Uh, did you hear that? I certainly did. Are you going to let him talk to you that way? <laughs> Finally, you're going to command this outfit. Everything's happening so fast. Ah, discipline, adherence to regulations, a top ship. I love tautness. <laughs> to command is your destiny. <laughs> oh. oh, I can feel the power surging through your veins. Am I really surging? Oh, Frank, you'll be magnificent. I just wish I'd taken ROTC in school. I wasted so much time in the stamp club. I thought you were president. Well, that wasn't leadership. They needed someone to lick the stamps, and I had the biggest tongue. <laughs> Frank, do you doubt your ability? Mm. Do you want to see how sure I am of your ability? 
All great men have their doubts. They say going up San Juan Hill, Teddy Roosevelt was worried sick about breaking his glasses. Look, darling. I've been saving it for you. Well, I haven't been promoted yet, Margaret. Out goes Major Burns. In comes Colonel Burns. Oh, Margaret, I think I'm surging. <laughs> bring Colonel Blake's absence. I will act in his capacity. So, if there are any problems, you may bring them to me or to our fine adjutant here, Major Houlihan. Now, talking to the Major is the same as talking to me since we are intimate with each other at all times. You're being replaced, sir. What? Outrageous! It's completely unfair! Oh, no, Major, this is uh, not an unusual occurrence at all. I mean, this is the way the Army is run. After all, we are all merely cogs in a giant military medical machine. Each cog occasionally has to lose a tooth on the gear of life. Now, um, if you'll all excuse me, I'd uh, best prepare for the change of command. Frank, you took that so well. I'm very proud of you. Okay, sirrah, sirrah. It was a blow below the belt. Oh, well, we've both had our share of those. <laughs> Mommy. Oh, oh, your mother will understand. I mean, my wife. Pass off! You'll all be sorry when I'm gone! You'll see! He was just so ate up with uh, childish, petty um, reactions, Insecurity. insecurities. Yes. Uh, I mean, oh my goodness! It was it was like an almost uh, a, a psychiatrist could have gotten a hold of him and just kept a hold of him. They could have they could have had a career. Right. Just on Frank Burns, his mommy issues, his distant father, yeah. his 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 wife. Who um, who basically discounted him and had no respect for him? Yeah. Um, the the children who were following in their mother's um, footsteps as far as like you know, but I mean he would mention his children, but he never actually seemed to to care about them. Yeah, but yeah. he would pass judgment on people in an oh, instant, absolutely. despite of all his own mm -hmm. transgressions. Right, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. with Margaret, for instance. And yeah. Um, questionable surgical uh, techniques, decision yeah. making, and techniques. Yeah. You know, he was mm -hmm. a terrible. Not. A t I mean, he, they implied that he may have been a, a proficient physician, but he was maybe unscrupulous or would do something to shortcut it. He would, an operation, yeah, he would you know? take shortcuts like uh, not uh, completely. Uh, there was something he was supposed to do when a when a when there was a gut shot. There was a bowel procedure that he was supposed to do that he would skip sometimes. Yeah. And um, there were patients who had, um, and I quote, well, he only almost died. So yeah. that, uh, that doesn't count. Right. But you never, you don't know. I mean, unless they do the statistics, you don't know if the, you know, the person, how many did die because right. of shortcuts. But he had an almost maniacal um, aspiration to be on the front line. He wanted to be mm -hmm. a military man more than a doctor. I think he wanted to talk about that. Yeah. That he was very gung-ho and he wanted to talk about that and he did actually you know, but I don't think he really wanted to go to the front line. He was he was quite much, quite a bit of a coward, which is part of why um you know, he uh, he talked about it. He talked a big game, but he didn't really want to follow through on that. So what, what are some of the, the funniest moments you remember with him? Um, let's see, Frank, the funniest moments. I loved it when he turned to Margaret one time and said, those two are ruining this war for all of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. There were, there were moments like that. It was so funny. Yeah. When, um, I, huh, I'm 
trying to think. I'm trying to put you on the I spot. I mean, there's so there's many. So many right? You did put me on the spot. Yeah. There, uh, but some of them are like so tinged with sadness, right? You know, right. because of how jealous he was, and you, you ended up feeling sorry for him. Like, for instance, when he went out and captured the family, um, these spies, right after uh, Margaret came back engaged and um, told him that they were no longer going to be playing um, anything together because she was now engaged to Donald Penobscot. Yeah. a Greek god and how she very much rubbed it in and it got to the point where even Hawkeye and um, and BJ were like you've, you've Felt got sorry to stop for him. Right. yeah you, you know this is ridiculous you're just being mean now right and at the end of the, mm-hmm. the episode you're referring to yeah they even went in on with Frank uh-huh. well not on a practical joke but Frank said something disparaging about Margaret's age uh-huh. <laughs> when they were sitting there <laughs> And they all had a laugh over it because yeah. Yeah, they commiserated. Just to commiserate with him because it wasn't really funny. That's one of the things. Frank was such a comedic character, but he wasn't really a funny person in in general. Yeah. You know, every once in a while, he'd, of course, get a good joke because, you know, if you if you throw a hundred shots, one of them's going to get in the basket. Yeah. You know? Okay, what, what about radar? My mom hated radar. Really? Yeah. Do you know why? You think she had gaydar for him? Because I didn't realize I had no I had no gaydar about that. My mom had very mm-hmm. sharp feelings about certain characters on TV for whatever yeah. reason, and she just I just can't stand that radar. She would say, <laughs> there's this. Do you so, think it's radar, or do you think it was Gary Berghoff? She'd be like, he's such a mousy little guy. Ah, <laughs> she, she likes like she she liked more. Yeah. Obviously, based on the knowledge of your father, she liked a more dominating man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's well, that's thing. that's true. But if, I thought if your dad said jump. She jumped. But I said, I mean, but I'm like, I was right. like, mom, can't you suspend disbelief a little bit? He's supposed mm-hmm. to be like maybe 18 and 19 year old kid here. Yeah. He's, he's like, got these he's, skills where he's able to, to uh, do these amazing things, you know, and get things. And to predict. The, yeah. Yeah. What people need. Yeah. So yeah. yeah take it he's easy on perfect, radar. He's the corporal. Yes, sir. I want to make a stateside call. It's a New York number. Canal 7 9000. Uh, yes, sir. I'll get on it first thing tomorrow morning. Well, I don't want it first thing in the morning. I want it first thing now. Uh, well, I can't get uh, reach them now, sir. I'll be calling them yesterday. That's ridiculous. Oh, no, sir. They're 16 hours behind us. Our today is their yesterday. It's 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, it's here, sir. Back there, it's 1 o'clock yesterday morning. Everyone's gone to bed and said, uh, see you tomorrow, which by the time their tomorrow comes will be our yesterday. Isn't it 16 hours later there? No, sir. But what if it is? When would it be now there if it was our today here? You see, we don't have the same now, sir. By the time their now becomes our now, this will be them. Okay. I think I got a beat on it. In order for me to talk to them at 9 o'clock in the morning their time, what time does it have to be our when? Uh, 1 o'clock our tomorrow morning will get you 9 o'clock there today there, sir. Then that's what we'll do. Yes, sir. As soon as they get a circuit, there's a two-day wait. I can't wait two days. That'll be... Three days ago. Right. Admin. And at the same time, he was everybody's little brother. Yeah. But, at, you know, but when it came down to it, he would, he would do what he wanted. He would, you know, he well, he'd wasn't get things always done. completely he'd, scrupulous. He'd, he'd yes. get things done that he wanted done. Right. But he might not. Like, for instance, know. Private Lamb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, so instead of a roasted lamb, everybody had to eat spam <laughs> in the shape of a lamb. Yeah. Well, wasn't it radar though that got the ribs? Remember when? Well, t- no, no. Adam's no, ribs. That was Klinger. Oh wow! When they did Adam's ribs, I'm pretty sure that was Klinger, and I don't think he was. Um, I mean, he helped. Yeah. But I, I'm pretty sure that was Klinger. Yeah. Well, okay, so he got the ribs. Mm-hmm. Um. That wasn't Radar. Oh, okay. um, Radar yeah. got the, um, uh, what is it? I think Radar and Father Mulcahy went to get the penicillin out from under the um, and the bell. Yeah. Was that Radar? No, that was Clayton and Father Mulcahy. 
Looks like Klinger, maybe. What did Radar do? Radar. Well, he was always getting like casks of bourbon and scotch and shit, you know, yeah. and mm-hmm. wheeling and dealing for this stuff. Right, right. Both of them were. Ice but, cream. Yeah. Oh, the strawberry ice cream. Radar really, really went through it to get the strawberry ice cream for Colonel Potter. But what happened was, it turns out after he ate the ice cream, he ate just a little bit of it. And then he remembered all of a sudden that he's allergic to strawberries. Because oh. <laughs> he yeah. was talking about how much he loved and wanted strawberry ice cream. Right. Well, okay. So, you know, there, you know, there's also, mm. we didn't really touch on Trapper too much. We didn't really talk no. a whole lot about, um, mm-hmm. you know, mentioned Father Mulcahy, but not, but mm-hmm. let's talk about some of the fringe characters mm-hmm. that we loved on that show. Okay. Like, Sidney Freeman. Yes. The psychiatrist. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, he was great. Yeah. Yeah. He would he would be called in for all, you know, all the kind of mental illness stuff. Now my question is, oh no, he was there when Frank was there. Yeah. He never he knew Frank because he was like, Yeah, that's a whole ball of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I can't touch that. Mm. And he was there at least once when one of our other uh, favorite recurring characters, um, Colonel Flagg, was there. Right, Colonel Flagg. At Flag. least once, uh, you know, the two of them crossed paths, if you will. Right. Yeah. He was a, a CIA, FBI intelligence man drinking? I'm not drinking. It just looks like I'm drinking. You had me fooled. Two years ago in Morocco, I had a device surgically planted in my throat that neutralizes alcohol. That way the enemy can never get me drunk. I find that hard to swallow. I heard they do that to get the truth out of you. Nobody can get the truth out of me because even I don't know what it is. I keep myself in a constant state of utter confusion. It's the best way to keep things organized. Making yourself at home, Flag? I have no home. I'm the wind. I told you he was the wind. You said he was the stars. No, I said he was the moon. Listen, Colonel Wind, would you mind blowing your butt off my chair so I can sit down? Very well, Colonel. Time for me to get up anyway. Now, everybody close your eyes. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, close your eyes. No, no, no. When no. I finish a job, nobody sees me leave. Oh, I forgot you're the wind. I'm either swallowed up by night or disappear in the mist. It's my trademark. Now close your eyes. I'd rather close my ears. If you don't close your eyes, I'm not leaving. Well, I... <laughs> Wind just broke his leg. Amazing, Colonel yeah. Flag, funny uh, as hell. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, mm-hmm. What he would uh, break yeah. his arm in order yeah. to stay in camp longer to watch over a, uh, a an a, alternate. Yeah, he uh, there was a spy with an alternate, another agency who was there. Uh, he was a friend of EJ's. Yeah, and. When Colonel Flag saw him, he was like, "Well, he's obviously up to something." Yeah. And so he um he 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 broke his arm so he could stay in camp. I thought that. Well, oh, there was another one where a soldier came in that uh, and there's some charges that were hanging over him, but he was really badly injured. And Flag was there, mm-hmm. and he was like, he he was intent on it was dark because he wanted that mm-hmm. soldier to be. No, that wasn't Flag. That was a different. That wasn't um, Flag. No, that was a different. There were actually two situations like that, but well, that might have been flag. Oh, it was a Chinese, and I think they got him. Right. I think they got him. They rescued him. They were like they got rid of him. But flag was like, let him go because I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna gun him down as he tries to you know run. Yeah, you know. But uh, oh, and then i no, that wasn't the one where they made a Chinese doctor a doctor, and and he actually they actually had him working at the mash until um it was it was discovered i think that was under potter i think under henry they probably could have gotten away with that for a really long time but yeah. with potter he figured it out pretty quick right but um but i'm thinking about flag and yeah i think there was a situation i'm mixing that one up with the one where the um the the other spy brought a female patient in for treatment and they helped her and they were trying to be all compassionate. And it turned out she was, you know, she was against them anyway. And she was like spitting on them for trying to be nice to her. 
Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. They were going to execute her right there. Or something. Right, yeah. right. Well, they were going to interrogate her. Yeah. I don't know if they were going to execute her. Probably. Right. But yeah, that was. Well, there's there was just a that lot. That was of, during the very the, the more serious years, like the last couple of years. Yeah. Now, um, let's okay. What else about um, about the you know okay. A favorite moment or a moment you specifically remember from each character. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what it... Okay. But, I mean, you know, we can, we can do that real quick. Well, okay. you, you would think. And I, I <laughs> always kind of focus on the more, the kinder or the more character breaks, if you will. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me start with okay. like, my favorite quote from Haw uh, Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. He's going through the tent and he's looking at this slop. He's getting ready to eat probably mm -hmm. for the, you know, 320th time out of 350 mm -hmm. days, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and he says, the guy says, you're going to have the liver or the fish. Mm -hmm. Hawkeye says, I can't take any more of it. Eating a river of liver in an ocean of, or ocean of liver yeah. and a river of fish. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, he just, he lost yeah. his mind. He just, yeah. I, I, don't, I can't remember and he flipped he, the table over. Oh or yeah. Something. No. Well, no. Secretary Stack? Yes, please. Potatoes? Fine. Cream corn? Thank you. And for the entree today? Here it comes. Steady. We have liver or fish? I didn't hear you say that. Because it isn't possible. It's inhuman to serve the same food day after day. The Geneva Convention prohibits the killing of our taste buds. Easy. I simply cannot eat the same food every day. Fish, liver, day after day. I've eaten a river of liver and an ocean of fish. I've eaten so much fish, I'm ready to grow gills. I've eaten so much liver, I can only make love if I'm smothered in bacon and onions. Are we gonna stand for this? We're gonna let them do this to us? No, I say, no! We're not gonna eat this drink anymore! We want something else! We want something else! We want something else! We want something else! Where are these in the world arise? Right. You have nothing to lose but your cookies! We want something else! 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 He flipped the trays, yeah. and um, and then he got up on the table and was uh, right. He got the whole tent rocking, yeah. you know. Uh huh. That and, may have been know, the ribs episode. No, Marley, yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, no, it was. Uh, you know what? It might have been. Right. That might have been the ribs, and he had to call his uh, uh, this girl that he had dated, Mabel, or maybe I don't remember her he name. Get cup contact with yeah. somebody go down the street and see if right. they're open or even still in existence or what he had to yeah, go through no, all kinds he knew of they were in existence yeah. but they couldn't they couldn't deliver them so what he did was he called the this girl that he had dated while he lived there yeah. and um he told her if they had an order to pick up at adam's ribs and um and if she could mail them to him he would send her the money for the the postage and she said, "Of course." And she asked what they were for, and he said, "Oh, well, they're for uh, they're for medical practice. They don't let us practice on the patients." And she just was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. And and BJ was like, "Really?" <laughs> 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 All right, that's Hawkeye. What do you? Yeah. What do you get? But what is it they forgot? They forgot something when they ordered. Oh, the coleslaw. The coleslaw. He forgot to order the coleslaw. Right. Yeah, I get that. All right. So, what's your favorite mm -hmm. moment from? Um... Mm -hmm. From Hawkeye? Well, you knew Hawkeye. You knew uh, my favorite moment from Hawkeye was when he um, when he bought the garbage that uh, Frank was auctioning off to the indigenous. Yeah. And um, and then he dropped it on a uh, I don't know if he was a, a a colonel or a general, but he had the helicopter drop the garbage on the general <laughs> as he was running out of town. Yeah. Because he was really really hated this guy. Yeah. Um, and then um, 
that was like one of my favorite moments from Hawkeye that was like just funny. What about uh, what's your favorite moment? I think I know this already. What's your favorite moment with uh, Charles? With Charles? Yeah. You do. You yeah. do know this because I talk about it. Yeah. Um, it was the Colonel Flag episode. Yeah. It was, I believe, maybe the last time I remember seeing Colonel Flag. I might be wrong about that. But <laughs> um, he sees Colonel Flag watching the slump, and there's a, um, there's a poker game going on, and he hunkers down next to Colonel Flag and says, ooh, are we staking out? <laughs> right. And with a very excited voice, and, um, and the poker game's about to get started, and uh, Flag's like, Why, oh, yes, just, just be quiet and all this stuff. And then um, two, um, two Koreans show up, or, or three maybe, to the poker game, and, uh, and Charles is like, why? Why? I don't know. Because uh, Flag is asking, he says, who are they? What are they doing? Why are they playing poker with Koreans? Yeah. And, uh, and Charles is like, well, I can't even imagine. <laughs> he's just really encouraging Flag out the just Right, out he's the door. humoring him. And yes, Flag's totally. taking the bait. He's, oh, he's yeah, like totally. carrying on a dialogue with so him. So then like... Frank, or then at, uh, at some point, Flag's had enough. And he breaks in on the poker game. And he says... You know, but like you're under arrest or whatever it is, and uh, and Colonel Potter gets so mad, and he's like, uh, "Oh, it it was a poker game with the mayor of Weejon Blue, Weejon Boo, and his assistant slash brother-in-law, yeah. and they had a I can't remember if it was weekly or monthly poker game uh, with uh, with these two, and then it was like you know the usual poker suspects." anybody who could fill in to get a full table and the, um, and the Korean dignitaries from the local town. Yeah. So, and, and it was just really funny, but it's, I always just remember that line. Ooh, are we staking out? <laughs> and the you, way was, he said it, you that know, was funny, yeah. I, I liked those moments when um, Charles broke out of his usual character. Yeah. And I mean, over time, he relaxed about the whole being hateful thing. But, yeah. I got one from Colonel Potter. Mm -hmm. It's the episode where uh, he gets a bottle of wine or champagne. Or, um, or, it's or maybe a, it was whiskey. Let's go with wine. It was a wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, and all his World War One, you know, his... Mm -hmm. his uh, yeah. His... Um, he had been in World War One, World War Two, and World War Three. Yeah. And they had found a stash of wine in in a basement. But they passed this bottle around mm -hmm. to the you know. I from, think it might have been at Bordeaux. Yeah. From man to man, when the, mm -hmm. the, the man when one man would die, he would pass it on mm -hmm. to another. Well, no, it was called a tontine. Yeah. And what it was was an arrangement where the tontine was whatever it was would automatically go to at the end when the last person, like you've got like all these people and, um, and they had a, a, like a lawyer or a law firm firm or whatever it was held on to the last bottle of wine. Yeah. They had drunk almost all of them and they decided to save the last one. It was a burgundy or a Bordeaux. Maybe I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Okay. Um, but uh, no, I'm, I'm, but I'm, the I'm last bottle, the last bottle went to the last person who was alive from their group. And that was Colonel Potter. Right, and that was Colonel Potter. Now, uh, I might be, I'm in danger here of being incorrect about mm -hmm. the quote. I've been known to be incorrect. But he he had talked about him and his buddy being a mm -hmm. you know a big fan of Doris Day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about going to see her at the theater and getting all hot and bothered looking at Doris Day. Okay. Yeah. Well, Is now that, that came out during a session where they had a very, very, very extended surgical session. But like even when I was a little kid, I thought about, even when I was going through puberty, I thought of Doris Day as a mother. Yeah. Like a motherly type. Almost, not a sex Not type. a sex symbol, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't a buddy of his. That had nothing to do with the Tontine. But it was his right Ron. episode, though. No. <laughs> That's Actually, what I'm saying. I don't know if it's the right episode. episode. 
<laughs> okay. Doris Day was in the episode where they had this really, really long surgical um, extension in the surgical theater. Yeah. I mean, super long. Okay. And Radar was playing um, music. He was a DJ. Yeah. They, they borrowed Charles's uh, record player and, and Radar was taking requests. Uh, but at some point, Dr. Colonel Potter started requesting Doris, Doris Day. Day. Right. And he kept requesting it. And que it sera, was, sera. Yes, que sera, sera. Yeah. And what it was, was he had gone to the movies by himself and he considered Doris Day his only transgression. Infidelity. Yeah. On his wife. Against his wife. And at the end of the surgery, he comes out after hearing that shit uh -huh. over and over and over and over again. And finally says, says you can quit playing it. Of all this, after all these years, I can finally say I'm, I'm sick, sick and tired of Doris Day. That's it. Exactly. So that's my roundabout way. <laughs> no, you see, and, and my Getting favorite Colonel Potter episode, I mean, I like the Tontine episode because it was so emotional yeah um and then he shared the bottle with his friends from from the you know from the man from the right right mm -hmm. his new right what you called his it new tontine his new family yeah but um what uh my favorite colonel potter episode i think would have to be it's a tie between when radar gives him the horse and when they build, when they amend his, his, his tent and they put in a picket fence. Yeah. Well, I remember know? he, he stepped what, in the dog or, or horse shit. Yes. And he <laughs> said, that's uh and, and Frank was like, tulips. oh my God. And he's like, that's a tiptoe through the tulips for an ex cavalry man. <laughs> yeah. It's Which, too bad that he got assaulted his wife in real life. Yeah. That's, let's not talk about those. <laughs> We're not talking about that. Stop okay. it. All right. All right. Okay. We're in make, make-believe yes. world here. Right. We're in make-believe land. Yeah. And, uh, although I actually was going to bring up something in like a real world thing. Yeah. Um, in that uh, there was an episode of, um, oh, uh, the cavalry thing. The cavalry connection. Because he actually wasn't the cavalry in World War One. Yeah. And then he also was cavalry in, during the short stint of cavalry they had for World War II, which they disbanded quite early. So I always kind of imagine in a humorous way in my head that he might have known your grandfather. Yeah, yeah. Who was in the cavalry in World War II. He would II. have been the same age as my grandfather. Yeah. So I just yeah. imagine him and your grandfather, like, you know, being buddies. Yeah. But I'm I'm trying to think. My grandpa has this like aura in my yeah. mind about him. Yeah. You know, this like, it's like. Well, that's because your mom basically had him on such a pedestal. Right. Right. Everything that she disliked about what her parents did was her mother's fault. Yes. It, her father was, you know, Saint Daddy could do no wrong. And I love my grandma, but she was a lot. Yeah, and I and my uh, my grandpa worked second shift at the post third, office, third shift, third shift. and then slept all day. You, you gotta wonder if he didn't do that on purpose because he spent his entire career on third shift. Yeah, the whole post office. After he got back from the war, he went into the post office third shift, uh, and uh, I hope the hell that stuff doesn't show up on the. Yeah. There's a, uh, we are hearing a weird whirring sound. This will be a throwaway if, you're hearing if it that does. Sound, I'm not, yeah. we got to fix oh, that. We can't have that when JT's okay. on. Uh, no, no, no. Uh -uh. We can't. Maybe we should try a different laptop. Yeah. Yeah, the one from the bedroom. Because it's driving, driving me crazy. But anyway, yeah. so we should wrap it up here. I know it's yeah. been over an hour. And uh, we, we haven't even touched on, you know. There's a lot. To, I yeah, mean, there is a lot. I mean, we could do the Andy Griffith show. Hmm. We could do. Yeah, that's more your cup of tea. Barney than Miller. Mine. I do. I have watched a lot yeah. of the episodes, but I'm not as um, devout. Devout. Right. Yes. But we both right. share. Mash is probably the one program that you and taxi. I both hold. Yes, taxi. taxi. What does a yellow sign mean? Slow down. <laughs> what does a yellow sign mean? Slow down. 
just keeps <laughs> yelling it because that's the answer. <laughs> Slow down. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, MASH is a terrific program. Yes. If you have not seen it, mm-hmm. you're in for it's quite the ride. Mm-hmm. It never expires because it was. It's in a vacuum. It's in a. It's a period piece. Yeah. It's not about any the time that it was even created. It's in, yeah. it's mid, is it it's early seventies? Like it's a moment set aside. Yeah, but it's about to, the fifties. Right. And originally, it was supposed to be about the Vietnam War, but it was felt that the Vietnam War was too recent yeah. and more serious. Korea, when the soldiers came back, it was almost like, oh, everything's fine. Yeah. So, but it's, they weren't celebrated, but they weren't, you know, they weren't denigrated. So they were kind of like the forgotten war, if you will. And you and I both had parents that were in yeah, Korea. Both of and, our and fathers had went these to Korea of, uh, of abandonment, so yeah. to speak. Because I think they kind of expected that World War II parade, rah, rah, rah return. Um, and it wasn't there. No. And, and at least they didn't get the, you know, Cold the 70s. Shoulder. Um, the backlash. Yeah, backlash. Right. That the, and you... I'm sorry, but I would never have blamed the soldiers ever. Not ever. Right. Mash, terrific show. This has been a terrific mm-hmm. time we spent with you. <laughs> but you'll be the judge of how terrific the out- uh, product is. But, <laughs> but. So thanks once again for joining us on Yeah, Aha uh-huh with Lisa. And Phil. <laughs> we have social. Twitter. Yeah, uh-huh, pod. Instagram. Yeah, uh-huh, pod. Facebook. Yeah, uh-huh, pod. So let us know. Hit us back. Have a great week. Bye.